So when I was born, I was born at home and the doctor, country doctor came up to our cabin and we had no money, of course. So daddy just paid him with a sack of our cornmeal that we had, had ground for our own winter purposes. So excited. You're obviously surrounded by your Dolly Parton line for Duncan Hines. Tell us about some of the new things. I know there's brownies, there's cornbread, there's biscuits. It's really Southern. Yeah, well, I'm actually trying to get it all together here. We're very excited about the new stuff. We do have the buttermilk biscuit, the sweet cornbread, and the fabulously fudge brownie mix, and the caramel turtle brownie mix. And of course, all these great recipes on the back of the boxes can show you how to do the cheddar chai biscuits. And we got the jalapeno cornbread, we got pecan brownies, peanut butter skit brownie sundae. So we got a whole variety of, of wonderful things that we've got. And we're very proud of all of them, very proud to be part of Duncan Hines and all that they stand for and all that they do so well. Absolutely. I love it. I love that you added a true Southern flair this time. I'm actually in Jackson, Mississippi, so I'm a little further south than you and I am obsessed. And now I can pretend that I make biscuits since I'm not actually from the South. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, a lot of people say that. A lot of people that are not from the South are loving how mm -hmm. the Southerners cook because you've always heard of Southern hospitality, great Southern cooking, soul food, all of that. So we have all of that, that going yep. for us now with all these recipes from Duncan Hines, which we all know how well they've done all through the years. So it's an honor to be part of them and to, to have them, you know, want my input on how to do some new recipes that do represent the South for people out there. But they're good anywhere yeah. you live. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, is it true? I don't know if it's a rumor or just something online, but is it true that your dad gave the doctor a sack of cornbread when you were born? It's a sack of cornmeal. See, we raised corn. Yeah, we raised corn. And so we would always kind of shell the corn and daddy would always take it to the grist mill to get it ground into cornmeal. And that's usually what a lot of country people do. So when I was born, I was born at home and the doctor, country doctor came up to our cabin and we had no money, of course. So daddy just paid him with a sack of our cornmeal that we had, had ground for our own winter purposes. So I always say that I've been raking in the dough ever since. So when I, I always get a smile when I talk about the cornbread yeah. mixes or the cornbread. So yeah, that's that's part of my whole heritage. Who know? Who knew that I'd be uh, in dough up to my eyeballs with all this? <laughs> it's a true full circle moment. I love that. Yeah, you, it is. Do you still have moments in your career where you do have those kind of surreal moments where it's like, look how far I've come. I've had an over 60 year career. Do you ever pinch yourself? Well, I don't pinch myself, but I'm grateful. I really think about it though. You are right about how I reflect back to my childhood, to my past and how all of these things have kind of come full circle in the fact that you, as you've said, I've been at this for 60 years now. I mean, I mean this, this many decades of, of being in the business has started very, very young. And so uh, all of these things have all come in handy because I've always tried to drag my past and my family, you know, into all the, the picture of my life. So, uh, and now it's like all of these good things that I get to do like this, in addition to the music and the movies and all the other things I do, it's fun to kind of have some family things, down home stuff to, you know, to be proud of and to represent and to present as well. Absolutely. You have a big birthday coming up. We don't have to mention numbers, but I just wanted to know, are you a big birthday person and, and how will you be celebrating? Well, actually, I am a, a big birthday person. This year, it's a very big birthday. I'm 77, which I always think that's God's number. So I'm dropping a song on my birthday. Uh, it's kind of a dream I had about God saying, you know, standing on a mountain saying, don't make me have to come down there. My children, you had best beware. If you don't pay attention, consequences will be dire. Don't make me have to come down there. So it's really about trying to make people think of what's going on in the world and try to make this new year a little better. But just pay attention to what you're doing and what you're doing to each other. So that's how I'm going to celebrate my birthday is dropping that song. And then I'm in the studio recording that day on my new rock and roll album that's going to come out in midsummer, early fall. So anyway, so I've been working hard on a whole bunch of things, but I'm excited about my birthday. But I, I, to me, that will be a celebration to get to work on something I'm enjoying doing. Mm -hmm. Do you, you must enjoy working because you could retire if you want to, right? What, what, what makes you want to keep going? Well, no, I don't think I could retire if I wanted to, because I've dreamed myself into a corner, as I say, because all these wonderful things keep happening and you got to, you know, you got to keep the dream alive. It's great that your dreams have come true, but there's such a thing as, you know, they all spawn one dream, you know, 
something else will spring off of that one. And you can't miss the opportunities. So since I love to work, I always say I'll just work. I'm going to work, uh, make hay while the sun shines, is the old saying. So I'm going to do that till I can't do it anymore. And then I'll think of what else I might do. And it's not possible to be doing that. But I'm going to go all the way with it. That's great. I know you've talked a lot about the secret to your marriage. Um, obviously, you guys have been together 56 years, I think it's been. Um, you've talked to, that the secret is maybe not having so much face to face time all the time and keeping yourself busy. <laughs> when you are with him, what are the things that you guys like to get, do together? Do you cook? Well, yeah, well, yeah, we do cook. In fact, he likes to cook. I've been on the road so many years that he had to kind of fend for himself because he did not want other people in the house. He did not want cooks and people are living in the house and all that. So we always just, uh, he did his own cooking when I was gone, loved my cooking when I was home. And we just have a, we always had a great time. We've been married 56 years, but we've been together 58. We dated for two years before we married. But anyway, we, we talk about, uh, since we don't do the same thing, we have a lot to talk about because I want to know what's been going on in his world. He enjoys hearing about what's going on in mine as long as he don't have to be part of it and be put on the spot with doing any of, of that. But we get along great. We've had a good life. We're, we're really compatible you know, as, as people. And he's a cancer. If you go by the, if you, if you kind of were those people to think about the, the signs of cancer and the Capricorn are totally match good because the cancer is a homebody mm -hmm. and the, and the, and the Capricorn to mountain goats is always trying to climb up the mountain. So that really suits us just fine, but we get along good and we meet in the middle and it's always worked out well. That's great. Um, you recently said that I Will Always Love You was actually about a business breakup. <laughs> Can you elaborate a little bit about that? Tell us more about that. And it, do you think now it's about your husband? <laughs> Well, I will always love my husband, no doubt about that. But that particular song was during the time that I was working with the uh, the first uh, band that I was with, the Porter Wagoner Show, which I really i am so thankful and grateful for all that because that was my big opportunity. But Porter and I used to go you know, round and around, and I wanted to go on out on my own to start my own career, and that was causing some problems. And he was having trouble with that, and I was having trouble with him having trouble about that. So I just kind of wrote that song talking about, you know, like the bittersweet memories and all the memories that we had made and all that. It's like, I'm, I'm going because I need to go, not because I don't care. So it was basically based on like a breakup of the partnership. That's interesting. Um, what What's a song that you absolutely love performing? And then what's one that you wish that you didn't have to perform so much anymore? <laughs> well, I actually enjoy singing all the songs. I really love singing. I will always love you because as a singer, you get to, you know, to do the emotional part. And then it's got a great range so you can sing as much as you want. And of course, I love the color many colors because it's home. Jolene, everybody loves. Nine to five is fun. So I don't think I have any songs that I dread singing. And if I did dread it, I just wouldn't sing them. So I just kind of remember all the reasons I wrote that particular song where I was at that particular time in my life in my emotional self, my mental self, and in my in my job. So uh, they all mean something to me. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I loved watching you guys perform Wrecking Ball together on New Year's. What is something that you've learned from Miley? Well, I have learned if you're going to sing with Miley, you're going to sing your ass off because she's great. So you got, you got to keep up with Miley because she's so talented. Actually, I think we we just kind of always kind of share whatever we're feeling. Miley mm -hmm. don't need any help from me and I'm doing all right on my own. But we do love sharing what we're going through and uh, what's going on in our lives and what our plans are and that sort of thing. We just talk like, uh, like goddaughter and godmother. Absolutely. I love my goddaughter just the same way. Um, she said that you clutched your pearls when she said that she was going to dye her hair brown. Is that true? No. <laughs> Well, she might. Now, I don't know what Molly, Molly's liable to do anything, but I'm not going to wear, uh, I don't think I'm going to be doing either, you know, but who yeah. knows, who knows what we might do. But Molly, she's got the, uh, you know, I kind of have to stay pretty true to how people know me, but when I'm doing my rock and roll album, which I am doing, it's called Rockstar, coming out early uh, early fall next year i'm going to have you know i'm going to be doing some photographs kind of look a little more rock and roll because the album is going to be called rock star so i'm going to have to try to be a little more uh, rocky <laughs> will you be asking her for some advice 
Well, I, yeah, actually, she's been very good about helping me get some of the artists that I've had. And we're singing Wrecking Ball on the album, too. My version of it, where I'm actually taking the lead and she's singing with me. But we're sharing all that great harmony that we do. So, yeah, that's going to be one of the special cuts on the album. But, of course, I couldn't do a rock and roll album without Molly. And she's been very, very helpful with the artists that she thinks would be good for me to have on the record with me. Absolutely. Have you heard her new song, Flowers? Yes, I love that song. I mean, Molly is so great. I mean, I just am so proud of her as a singer and songwriter. I mean, I don't know who wrote that, but I have a feeling she had plenty to do with it. It was her story, if not her her actual writing, but she's a great songwriter and a great singer. But yeah, I think it's a fantastic song. You know, you can, I can hold my own hand. I can buy my own flowers. You know, that, you know what a great idea for a song. Like, who needs you? You know? <laughs> I love it. Uh, I know that you and her dad used to tour all the time. Have you talked to him since his engagement? Have you spoken to him? Uh, well, we talk. He did my Christmas uh, special, mm -hmm. the uh, Ma Magic Christmas, and we got a chance to talk a lot, and I got to meet his girlfriend. But, yeah, I love Billy Ray. Like, I love Molly. They're family. My, he's like a brother to me, and she's like a daughter. That's nice. But, no, I haven't talked to him since the engagement. Okay. But she seemed like a sweet girl. Nice, nice. Um, last thing, we always love your beauty. What is one thing that you buy at the drugstore for your beauty? Like, what's your one drugstore go-to item? I'll go to the drugstore for drugs, not makeup. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I'm just one of those people. I've used, like, Maybelline. I use Olive Olay. I, I use all of the great products that you don't have to spend a fortune for, but they're really good because they're mainly all the same. But anyway, I just I always have to have my, my makeup and my rouge and my, so you can tell I'm an old timer. I still call the blush the rouge. But anyway, I just have to have whatever I need for my eyeshadows and all, you know, for the lipsticks and the powders. So the basic stuff that anybody that wears makeup would want to have. Awesome. Well, thank you, Dolly, so much. It was an absolute okay. dream for me. And thank you for being patient with the internet and whatever happened there. <laughs> anyway, we do what we do, don't we? We get the job done. Thank you, Mandy. I appreciate you. All right. Bye, guys. Okay. Bye-bye. For more news content and exclusive interviews, make sure to hit the sub, like, and bell button down below and visit usmagazine.com.